This first comedian is going to be telling you a great story. Uh, we've known each other for how, how long have we known each other? Your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> My whole life. We met back in Brooklyn? In Brooklyn, I think, yeah. yes. <laughs> Possibly, yes. On the front of some apartment at? Sure. Crazy. I was like, Just coming in. <laughs> you guessed it. My sister, the wonderful Alexandra Lennox. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys a quick little story about my, something that happened in my life that was super fun. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, I work on a farm. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, <laughs> And um, I keep chickens on this farm. Um, we have about six of them. Had. Um, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. <laughs> um, but so my first year keeping chickens was uh, uh, four years ago. It was my first year at the farm. It was my first year ever keeping chickens. And uh, as Zach mentioned, I'm from New York City, where there are not a lot of farms and not a lot of chickens. <laughs> and uh, the way I started keeping chickens was my boss said, hey, Alex, it would be cool if we had chickens on the farm. And I said, Claire, that would be totally dope. And she was like, yeah, great, go get them. <laughs> um, so that was an exciting learning experience for me. So I bought some chickens that were very, very young chickens. Those are called pullets, which means they're like just a couple months old. Um, I haven't started laying eggs yet, and I got a bunch of different varieties. They're all really cool looking, and some were striped, and some were red, and some were golden colored. They were all supposed to lay different colored eggs, and it was really, really cool. Um, and the chickens all started to grow. They were very happy chickens on my farm. And one of them started to grow bigger and bigger than the other chickens. Um, it, it got uh, pretty big, and then it started to develop this really beautiful red thing right here. Does everyone know where I'm going? <laughs> really beautiful red thing right here. And then I got to the farm very early in the morning, and I heard the beginning of like a. Rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> that is no hen. <laughs> definitely a rooster. God damn it. And, uh, and uh, so I have uh, teens that work at my farm and their job is to go take care of the chickens in the morning. And one of my teens came in and was like, hey, you took care of the chickens, came to my office and was like, Alex, that one of the chickens was really mean to me. And I was like, <laughs> it's a chicken. <laughs> and he, he was like, no, no, but like, it was really, like, it attacked me. And I was like, Ch chickens are this tall. Like, <laughs> I was like, it's a fucking chicken. Um, but I was really nice to him, and I was like, okay, I'm sorry. That sounds terrible. <laughs> but, um, I guess you don't have to do chicken chores anymore. And then the following week, <laughs> yes, um, if you're going to be a fucking wimp about it, that's fine. So then um, the next week, one of my teens came to my office, and she is has been working for me for years and is like a very diligent worker and she's actually, this is a side note that's unrelated, a track star and she runs to the farm and then works all day on a farm and then runs the three miles home, which is very impressive. I would never do that. Um, and she came to my office and she was like, hey, and I was like, what's wrong? And she goes, so like the chicken, the chicken attacked me? <laughs> and I was like, all right, I mean, like the other kid is a space cadet, but like Annie knows her shit. And I was like, Annie, that's, that's, that's some fucked up shit because I talk to teenagers like that, because I'm, I'm a professional adult. <laughs> and you had some really fucked up shit. I will go deal with this. So I went to the chicken coop, and I was kind of like, mm, this is sort of stupid, like, it's fine. And, and I walk to the coop, and the chickens are all around my feet, and I go to pick up the, the watering, like the chicken water, and um, the, rooster, <laughs> the rooster comes up to my feet and like just kind of pecks once at my foot, and I was like, dude, like, Knock it off. And I kind of nudged him away. And that fucker flew to my face. <laughs> and his fucking talons were out and my eye fucking wanted blood. And <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And I beat him off of the ring. It's fine. <laughs> He's fine. Um, well, not anymore. So, <laughs> so I, um, so we put him in his own coop because it was like too fucked up to happen with the other chickens because he would attack them and chicken mating is really violent and kids would watch it and there'd be blood and the chickens and the kids would be like, what are they doing? And you're like, I'm snuggling. <laughs> um, and um, so we isolated him and then um, at the end of the season I told my teens that we could either um, I, we could either wrestle him into a dog crate and then we could drive him for three hours to a farm that said they were looking for a chicken. 
like a rooster to then mate with their chickens, or we could harvest him. <laughs> And guys, before I finish saying the word harvest, the chick the teenagers were pounding on the table and all of them were just screaming, KILL HIM! <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we killed this rooster. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you guys eat meat, but it's fine. It has to come from somewhere. Someone kill, someone kill that meat that ends up on your plate. Um, so, <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Um, so we had a very nice day. We gave the rooster a whole bunch of fresh vegetables. He had a lovely morning. Um, <laughs> and then we, um, I bought some tools for it. You can actually just buy an X-Acto blade. It's a D-shaped X-Acto blade is what you're looking for. I went to, <laughs> yeah, um, that's because you want to get right under the, yeah. Uh, so, um, I went to the art store in Central Square to buy this, and um, there was like a really goth chick working at the store, and she was like, she's like, what do you need that blade for? <laughs> and I was like, um, I'm gonna kill a rooster. <laughs> and she goes, that's so fucking metal. <laughs> Um, and uh, a traffic cone because you put the rooster in the traffic cone upside down, his head comes out. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, is this getting too real? <laughs> um, so what you do is you 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 <laughs> slice the jugular vein on one side, and the blood pumps out. And I know this is this is comedy, guys. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and you catch the thunderbolt. <laughs> And then um, you have to get rid of the feathers, so you dip it a bunch of times in boiling water and pull the feathers off and whatever. So we did all this stuff, and we're uh, this is my first time killing a living thing on purpose. <laughs> um, a longer story about that if you guys want to hear about all the other animals that have talked before. <laughs> it was a rough first year for me. <laughs> um, but we then went inside and um, pulled out. I'm not a serial killer. <laughs> and went inside and you take all the innards and it was really fascinating and we took out the stomach and we like cut open the stomach and saw all the food that he had eaten which is super neat and this is by the way me and a group of teenage girls <laughs> um, 15 year old girls so it's me seven 15 year old girls and a woman who has also killed chickens before so she's kind of leaving it and we're pulling out all the stuff inside and it's really cool and um his gizzard, which is um, where uh, chickens don't have teeth, obviously. They have rocks in their throat that grind all their food, so we get to see all of that, which is really neat. But guys, this is also pure learning science. <laughs> um, and she gets to this one, so she pulls out something, and it's this like little round like white thing, and it's attached by a thread to another little round white thing. And the woman who's killing the chickens for us keeps hens in her backyard, and it's just like, and she's kind of our chicken expert in person, and she's looking at it, and she goes, huh, I don't, I don't actually know what those, I don't know what that is, I've never seen that before, and she like holds it out, you know, I put, I take it in my hand, and I'm like, I don't actually know what that is either, um, what do you guys think, <laughs> look at the teenagers, and this one adorable teenager, um, his name's Anna, who's very sweet, and childlike, and delightful, <laughs> turns really red, <laughs> and then she goes, oh my god, I'm like, what's up, Anna? And she goes, I think I know what it is. <laughs> I think I know what it is. And I go, oh, you should, what is it? And she goes, but like, I can't say it out loud. <laughs> I'm like, you know, we're all friends here, it's fine. And she goes, okay, but like, like, what if? What if? <laughs> what if those are his balls? <laughs> Those were his balls. <laughs> and let me tell you, I have never felt more like a successful man-hating feminist <laughs> than in that moment where I had a dead cock on the table and his balls in my fist. <laughs>